Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the MAC training program for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. As always, I am Chanel Allen, your instructor, and tonight we will be finishing up text edit and doing our first of a two-part series on mail. As far as our iBeg events this week, um, we have the cafe on Sunday. I'm not going in order, but I will come back. Uh, so our cafe is from 4 to 6 p.m. And I thought of it because we're just talking about the calendar right now. And apparently we'll be talking about different calendar apps at the cafe. So come and check it out. Um, and then on Thursday, we have our book club meeting for the book. It's called The Cats Came Back by Sophie Kelly. I forget the DB number. Um, Sonia can give it to us if anybody needs it. Or it's on our website, ibugtoday.org. And then we have our movie on Friday. I forgot what it is, but if you just show up at 7.30 for the pre-movie social and 8 for the movie, you'll probably enjoy it if you've enjoyed all the others. And then there's a discussion after the movie. And I believe, oh yes, and don't forget we have our raffle. I'm sure those of you who come on our Mac and Talk, or not Mac and Talk, <laughs> I bug buzz every Monday, um, hear about it. But just as a reminder, up until our 10th year anniversary celebration in May, which will be exciting, we are doing a Apple Watch raffle. And the $10 will get you one ticket. That $10 goes to support iBug Today. And if you buy six tickets, you can pay $50. Again, all those details are on our website, ibugtoday.org. Okay, so today then we will go ahead and go through some of the focus questions I picked on text edit. Then we'll move to the spell check demo and then we'll get into mail. So let's see. All right, our first question. Uh, what are some advantages for using text edit versus pages or Word? Oh, this is Rosanna. Yeah, Rosanna, go ahead. Um, the with text edit, you can do first letter navigation, as where it's more difficult to do that in Word and Pages. Yeah, like in the fonts, definitely. In, yeah, when you're choosing a font. Font. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everywhere else you, that you'd use first letter navigation. Okay, that's good. Anyone else? This is Marion. Yes, Marion. Um, you uh, need fewer VO commands uh, and, and navigation in text edit, and it's just simpler to learn when you're beginning with Mac or with word processing. Yay, yep, yeah. um, great. You thought of the first answer I gave, Rosanna thought of a more specific answer. And so um, not to pick on you, Rosanna, but I know <laughs> that you are a the bit secretary and you work on minutes, so yeah. maybe you'll be able to start working on some of those in text edit. <laughs> well, that's what I wanna do. That's what I was saying, you know, to Herbie. I, I want to be able to do it in text edit and not have to like come up here and do it on this dumb. Well, you know what I do sometimes or what I've done? I would write something in text edit and then I'd go through and check over it in Word and Windows. So, you know, you could just kind of get started and then. And then um, transfer it. Yeah, because if you create like an RTF or doc or docs, you know, it'll open in Word on Windows. So. Um, or any of, of the files that text edit supports. So. Okay, cool. Maybe. Yeah. I, yeah. That's what my hope is because I'm tired of trying to do this with JAWS. I think voiceover is more efficient actually than JAWS. Okay. All right. Well, great. Okay. Our next question. Describe one method of opening documents in text edit. Oh. Uh, this is Rita. I'll Hi, try. Rita. <laughs> uh, command Dan uh, Command O. Yeah, that's one. Uh, oh boy. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to think of another way. V O. Uh, I, I know it's not Enter because <laughs> that will change well, the name. Well, what like kind of process did we talk? Okay, we talked about. Um, like one way that I opened a few files last week. Um, uh, 
right arrow? The, uh, okay, so we went to the um, file and the text edit menu. And then we went, or I'm sorry, went to the file menu and text edit. And then we went to open recents. Oh, so, right, 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 sorry. Yeah. That's okay, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I know yeah. I ask about VO commands. I ask about how do you do this? How do you do that? It's hard to keep track. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how do you create a new document? This is Nancy. Yes, Nancy. Uh, command N. Yep. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of this chatty participants table. Okay. What is the primary purpose of text edit preferences? Or in other words, you know, what what might you use um, text edit preferences for? And um, list some of the options available in the new tab. This is Nancy. Yes, Nancy. This is Jeopardy, double Jeopardy. <laughs> uh, oh. um, you can um, choose your font and you can choose if you want the, um, what type, how you want the, if you want it to be an RTF or plain text, um, yep. whether it wraps to the top or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the size, did I say that already? The size of the. Of the yeah, very thing? good. Yeah. So in the preferences, basically, it's kind of like creating a template um, in the new tab. So when you open a new document, these are the default settings that are applied. Yeah, you, um, like you said, the font, the margins, um, the ruler, spell check, all those things you can specify. Um, and so very good. All right, what is the difference between save and save as? And how do you make save as appear in the file menu? I'm going to take a stab at the first part of the question. Sure, go ahead. Okay, and, and this is from my longtime Windows use. That's and, fine. <laughs> that's okay. fine. Okay, if it applies, that's good. Because um, save as in Windows would be the first time you save a document, and it gives you choices about, uh, well, you name it the document, and it gives you choice about where to file it and, and, you know, some other choices. And then uh, every time after that you hit save, it's going to use those choices and just update whatever you've changed and save it. Yep. Um, yeah, actually the first time you do save, yeah, that's, um, it will give you those things because it doesn't know where to save it. And then after that, yeah. when you save, it won't prompt you. But then when you do save as, even if you've had a document saved, you could choose to Maybe oh. put a different file name or make it a different format. So, like, oh. for example, yeah. I might get a copy, I don't know, of some, um, of something, or a schedule or a um, brochure, a syllabus or whatever, and I might want to mark it up myself, edit it. So I want to do save as so I can, you know, have my own copy. And so we're still keeping the original. Um, so I'm not messing up. Right. That and I can then, you know, make it a different format if I want. And so basically in the menu, um, text edit and all well, yeah, text edit, I think some of the other apps to have something called duplicate. And so when you get to duplicate, you can press the option key and then voiceover will announce save as and it probably appears that way on the screen. So mm -hmm. Duplicate is to make an exact duplicate copy. You can't choose the file name. You can't, it just makes a duplicate. Where, and save as, you know, you do oh. kind of, it's like going through the save dialogue over again. Right. So the duplicate would, you'd have two files with the yep. same name. Yep. Oh. Well, actually, one would say like copy one or copy, I, oh, I don't oh, remember. Okay. I, oh, but okay. But yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, this we kind of hit on that at the end. Okay, Nancy, go ahead. No, I have, I have a question after Nancy. Okay, on, Nancy Rosalind. first. <laughs> Nancy first. Um, 
so um, when you do a duplicate like that, can you make changes to the duplicate and will it will it let you then save do a save as with yeah, you can make changes to the duplicate and then you would just do the regular save. Um, I don't know um, why, but <laughs> you, I mean you I suppose you could do save as, but um, for whatever reason, that's why I've never fully understood duplicate. Um, you know, I used it in the beginning and was so confused, like, what in the heck is this thing doing? It's just a copy, you know, but, um, and so then the file would kind of be in this random spot or not where I want. So then I'd um, go to the save um, and then I could specify all the options. So Mac kind of uses save and save as a bit more interchangeably maybe this than Windows. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I think the advantage you have with duplicating is you might, at least with the duplicated file, if you, let's say you need a file to be re, you need to be able to read a file, but you also want to modify it. So maybe you want two different versions of the file and you don't want to accidentally undo the work you did in the original file. So if you duplicate the file first, then if you make any changes, it's strictly in the duplicated file. And so if you forget to do a save as, you're not screwed, if that makes sense. That Yeah, that's kind of a good... Um, I, I know, it's kind of... Con it can get a little bit confusing, but um, that's a great explanation. Yeah. <laughs> this is Dorothy. I have one, too. Sure. So um, I have to do, like, interviewing scholarship applicants. Uh-huh. And I may have 10 to 20 applicants, but the same questions. And so right. I always duplicate, yeah, my questions form and just rename it with that applicant's name. Uh-huh. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. All um, right. This is Rosanna. I have sure, a Rosanna. question about the save as. Does uh -huh. text edit automatically save your changes or is there like a keyboard shortcut or a shortcut key to like, command s or something to save so you don't lose your document yeah so you can always do command s um and then in system preferences in general um so going back to like our second lesson or third lesson there's an option um where you can it's basically to prompt for confirmation before closing or you know because some and that applies to saving as well. Um, I don't know if I can find the exact option. Let's see. Um, and this is Herbie. Yeah. One of the things to get used to with text edit, and I know from experience, is if you open a file in text edit that you originally edited on another computer, sometimes when you start writing in it, it's going to pop up a window asking if you actually want to override the document. Yeah, if you're working oh. with like doc or docs or... Okay. Yep. Um, That's a okay, point. let's see. That can be useful as well as annoying, though, you know, because I've, you know, I know this from my own experience because there's been doc files that I wanted to read as okay. a book. I start writing. And... Ask to keep changes when closing documents. If it is unchecked, your changes are automatically kept. So I've actually had a problem with that sometimes. I, you know, maybe forgot to create myself a duplicate copy. And so I actually, you know, overwrote. So I have that checked. So that way, it, it, when it's unchecked, the, th the stuff will just save. Um, okay. So... And when it's checked, it will prompt you. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. All right. Um, what is the command to show fonts? Oh, Nancy. go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, go ahead, Nancy. Command T. Yep. All right. And um, anyone, let's see, name some of the commands to read and navigate text. This is Rita. <laughs> yes, Rita. <laughs> um, there's, uh, it helped me to kind of make this distinction uh, between there's the system commands, Mac yep. commands, like uh, command down arrow goes to the end, command up arrow goes to the top, uh, you know, uh, just the down arrows one line at a time. Um, 
and then there's the the voiceover commands yeah so like uh you know vo down arrow uh, uh vo uh you know with the letters uh for navigating right um, and i find myself using more of the mac commands because they're, they're more i'm used to them you know from yep. from windows <laughs> me too <laughs> and so so, so anyway, so that's kind of how I think of navigating uh, and editing. So. Yeah, very good. Yeah, anything that has the command key kind of by itself is just a Mac command. You also, though, have like option left and right to move by word, which is also technically a Mac command. Um, you could do VO left and VO right, but sometimes I find that a little bit quirky, especially in the mail app. Um, so I just always use option right and left even when I'm uh, reading by word. Yes. And so, yeah. Um, and then how do you know your... Did the, what, I'm sorry, did the system have character option or does that, you, to move by character, do you have yeah, to Yeah, you over? use the left and right arrow. So right arrow moves forward, a character... Voice right arrow. over. No, just the, this arrow. With the, with the VO kit? No, just the arrow. Just, just the oh. arrow keys. Just, oh, yeah. like if, that'll move character by character. Correct. Okay, yep. thanks, sorry. Yeah. This, this is Nancy. I yeah, found, Nancy. I found out something from Apple Tech Support, which was if you want to really get accuracy when you're spelling a word in a document, you can interact with that word because my computer skips letters, like mm -hmm. it skips the first couple letters, and I yep. call, why is it doing that? And they said, well, if you interact with that word, then it will. You, you can use the left and right arrows and it will spell every, and it does it's amazing how much more well you actually so what you want to do is in general it's always a good idea like I mentioned to interact with the text in the first case I mean it depends on too though like if you're in Safari you may need to interact with the word uh, whereas in text edit if as long as you interact with the text then you're pretty good. I mean, if you had to interact with the word and it worked for you, then great. I'm not saying don't, but I'm saying in general, if you interact with the text area, the area that you edit, you'll probably have less um, occurrence of skipping. So let's see. Um, how are we doing on time? It, it Okay, I probably do need to get started. Um, I was going to ask you a question about how you know your location relative to the cursor, <laughs> but um, we, if you want to think about that, and meanwhile, we will get started with finishing up text edit and going into mail. So I'm going to share my sound, and well, here we go. All right, so I'm going to open text edit. Text edit three of twenty. Zoom enter. System by text edit. Open window. Mail. And now I'm going to go to file. Menu bar. Apple file. file down arrow. Menu. New command. Uh, N. Op. Open ellipsis command. Open down recent. Arrow. Sub menu. Um, expand th with right arrow. Open recent sub menu. Mail notes RTF. Spell check demonstration RTF. Spell check demonstration. Here we go. And I had to kind of be creative to misspell some words here because <laughs> I uh, yeah. So we'll see. Okay, here we go. Spell check demonstration RTF. Spell check demonstration RTF. Window. Edit text. In All right, so it's always a good idea. We'll this interact with the text. text. Um, so there's a couple, there's two methods of spell check. One is show spelling and grammar. And that is the traditional spelling and grammar check that you might find in Word. Zoom us. And I Zoom forgot us. to Nude mute current and new participant checked. So I apologize for that. Te text All right. So anyway, we'll go, we'll do that. Um, you can explore the spelling and grammar menu. It's inside the edit menu uh, when you have a chance. But in the meantime, I'll just use the shortcut command colon. Spelling and, gr spelling and grammar window. Okay, one thing. So it doesn't, voiceover doesn't really tell us where we're at. Um, by the way, the spell check uh, tool or whatever you might call it is the same and you use the same process whether you're in mail whether you're in text edit pages even in um, the or the messages app or maybe you're typing something in safari and you want to spell check it so you do the same thing 
Uh, Word still provides its own spell check, but this is different from Windows because the Mac spell check facility is available everywhere. Okay, so we are placed in this. Um, we did show spelling and grammar with command colon. If we VO left. Spelling and grammar. All right, and then we VO right. Demonstration. Content selected. Edit text. And that was just to kind of get a sense of where we were. Okay, so our first word here. Um, don't forget, we can do V-O-W twice to hear how it's spelled. Demonstration. D-E-M-U-N-S-T-R-A-S-H-U-N. Yeah, I, like I said, I had to think about how to misspell some things. Okay, so if we V-O right. Change button default. The first thing we find Correct is change. Item. And, or you could press tab to get to these. Um, Text. This word was not found in the spelling dictionary. I'm pressing V-O right. Okay, and then I'll V-O right again. Find next button. Suggested corrections table row one of one demonstration selected. And if you want to Choose double one check of the suggested corrections, okay. Sorry, I was talking over voiceover. If you want to double check how that's spelled again, you could do V O W twice D E M O N S T R A T I O N. And then since earlier it said change default, we know that we can press enter and that action will be taken. Spell check content selected, edit text. All right, and again, we can see how we misspelt it. Um, we could go over to the, this time though, let's just tab. Suggested corrections, table, row one of one, sepulcher, selected. <laughs> I don't think that's the word we wanted, but see when you press tab, it takes you right to the suggestions, which is awesome, but you skip over the change button or that this word was not found. For me, a big disadvantage of the show spelling and grammar is you can't view the word in context. I'm going to show you the other method, the command semicolon method or um, check document now where you get to go through one error at a time and as you're going through those errors you can read the sentence that they're in and, and kind of get a context. All right, so let's I'm going to press escape Spell check so we can do the other method. Um, oh, Spell I forgot check. to show you Be what selected. else was in there. But another big disadvantage of the spelling and grammar, or show spelling and grammar, is there are no quick keyboard shortcuts. So like in Word, for instance, you could use Alt-I or Alt-G for ignore and ignore all, Alt-C to change, Alt-A to add or something. The Mac, there are no shortcuts for those things. So you kind of have to tab or VO arrow around. So to me, those are two big disadvantages of the show spelling and grammar. You can't view the word in context unless you navigate away from the window and you can't use handy little shortcuts to even speed things up further. All right, so now we'll do command semicolon. I'll make sure I'm at the top. Spelled. Spelled. And we, okay, we are. So now I'll do command semicolon. Misspelled. Spell check. Selected. And if we do VO shift M. Menu. And then VO down arrow. VO down arrow will take us right to the first suggestion. Sepulcher. It also offers that. Um, so we'll go and edit the word in just a minute. But Ignore spelling. You can ignore the spelling. And you also have that ignore button in the show Sepulcher. spelling and grammar. Ignore spe learn spelling. Or learn spelling. That's, in other words, add it to the dictionary. Look up spell check. Look it up. Search with Google. Or search. Cut. And then you get to all the other things you would normally have in the context menu. So the context menu is great in so many ways. And in text edit or anything where you're doing spell check, it's great for bringing up the suggestions. Edit. Okay, so we could, you know, look at the spell sentence. Check. This is, is a selected. review with VOS. Basically, if you want to use VO commands, you think of the first letter of whatever it is you want to do, except when you're moving to previous and next. So if you want to read your current sentence, V-O-S, your current paragraph, V-O-P, your line, V-O-L, your word, V-O-W, your character, V-O-C. But if you want to move to the next and so forth, then you would use the arrow keys in combination with other modifiers like command and option. Okay. So if we do VOS. This is a demonstration of misspelled spell check for the Mac misspelled. All right. I'm sorry. I cut it off. But it'll say the word misspelled before the word that is actually misspelled. So now I'm going to do left arrow. Misspelled spell check. Unselected insertion at beginning of word spell check. 
When we did VO, uh, when we did command semicolon, that selected the word. So then pressing left arrow, or we could have pressed right arrow, would have undone the selection. But I know I press left arrow, so I should be to the left of that word. So now if I right arrow, S. and voiceover is speaking, well, P E L. The text that the cursor, um, or whatever, VO is speaking, the text, um, the cursor passes in either direction. C, H, E. Okay. Oh, so we want to put a C here, and I forgot to go back Spell and put check. the extra L. All right, so then let's left arrow. C. So um, we're in front of that C that we just put in there. E, H. We're in front of H. C. We're in front of C. And because we're in front of C, we're to the right of L, so I could just put in the letter L. And there spell you check. have spell check. And if you do V-O-W twice. Spell check. S-P-E-L-L-C-H-E-C-K. And we can move onward. Command semicolon. Spell. Training. Selected. And V-O shift M. Menu. And V-O down arrow. Training. And we can check the spelling. V-O-W twice. Training. T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G. And V-O space or enter to select to accept the suggestion. Edit text. Training. And we can keep going. Command semicolon. There. Selected. Okay. So we've come across the word there. And let's look at the sentence. Well, first let's look at the misspelling. There. Cap. T-H-E-I-R. Well, that's the correct spelling of there, or one of them. You can look at the sentence. There are misspelled several misspelled mistakes. Okay, so we're talking about the other kind of there. But if you were using the show spelling and grammar, you would not have a chance to see this sentence. And if the grammar was unchecked, which you can uncheck, by there. the way, in that showing unselected. spelling and grammar and accidentally unselected the word, then um, you, it, you, it might not Space. come up. So let me do that again because accidentally... There. Select All right, so now we'll do VO shift M Menu. and VO down arrow. There. VO W twice. There. T H E Y apostrophe R E. And VO down again. That's there. not what we wanted. There. T H E R E. All right, press return. Edit text. And for some reason, it did not suggest a capital. So then if you go back through the document, it will actually, and it will go to that word again, but it'll give the correct capital T H E R E. It's a bit weird. Um, but if we do command semicolon, several, select VO shift M, menu. Um, VO down arrow, several. that sounds right. Press enter. Several. All right. And we could just keep going. Now, there are other ways to just show or bring up your misspelled words with VO that it doesn't necessarily bring up the suggestions, but if you press VO command E, maybe think of E for edit, I don't know, it, you can show the next misspelled word. Misspelled, mistakes. Or VO command shift E goes to the previous misspelled word. Like I said, it does not bring up suggestions. Uh, we can correct this mistake. So if I, because it's not selected, we should be to the left. M, I. Yep, so now we're to the right of I. S. S. Oh, we should delete that extra S, so I'll press delete. S. T. E. Oh, that sounds wrong. Delete the E. e. A. K. K, that's um, S. Ah. All right, so then we'll left arrow, S. add the E, and there Mistakes. you go. If It's, it's funny, because if I do these simple words, like one word at a time, you know, it makes sense. But then if I try to go and delete words or lines or whatever, I still even get confused about the cursor position and voiceover. So <laughs> you really have to kind of, for me, I almost have to talk it out to myself to um, have the whole thing make sense, because it's almost opposite in... Windows, but it's the same process you use to, let's say, edit the text messages that you type on the phone. We also have our VOU. We use that in Safari for the web rotor, but it can also be used in within other applications, just as a regular rotor. So you have VOU. Window spots menu. And if I right arrow. Misspelled menu. And then I down arrow. Document. All right, so if I press return. Misspelled. Document. That would take me to the word. Um, you also have, so VOU. Misspelled menu. Windows misspelled menu. We only have window spots and misspelled, Edit. but um, I just kind of remembered this today. If you have a hard time pressing like VO command page down or VO command shift, 
whatever for the paragraph, you can do another version of the rotor. There's a million. So VO command right arrow. Lines. Um, we'll move forward by choice. It's kind of like the up and right arrow, the quick nav rotor, except you're doing it with VO commands. Um, so you can move to lines. Sentences, paragraphs, navigation. Characters, words, window spots, misspelled. And it was already unmisspelled. And then you could do VO command down arrow to move to your next misspelling. Misspelled. Spell check. All right. We did spell that wrong again. All right. Misspelled. Corky. Or VO command up to move misspelled. to the next one. Spell check. Um, you know, again, we could turn our rotor to sentences. Lines. Sentences. VO command up arrow. This is a demonstration of spell check for the Mac training program. There are several mistakes in my misspelled. Document. Yeah. It. Okay, because of the weird capitalization thing. Okay, so that's kind of a lot, but I think you'll find it easy to do spell check if you use command semicolon, and then you'll get to go through one error at a time. Herbie has found that, you know, somebody, he has to type quite a lot with papers and messages and all that, and it's easy to make typos. Zero and this. for some reason, the Mac is not as intuitive or doesn't at correcting some of those as, let's say, um, word, or sh I, I should say word specifically. So, um, you know, you may find you can always copy and paste into Word if you want to just use the word spell check feature. I'm going to press Command Q. Quit text edit. In dialog, alert, revert changes. And here we're being prompted about saving. Do you want to save the changes made we to don't. save revert changes? So I'll press VO space. Zoom us. System and now let's go into mail. I'm you going are sharing to press VOD. Sound. Text edit three. And we'll go to MA mail. for mail Five of and press return. Actions I have, available. Before we do that, I've set the mail to the view that you probably have, or that is the default um, when mail is launched for the first time. Minus all the things I have in my inbox, of course. But now we'll press enter to open mail. Come zoom us. System dialog. Mail. Inbox. Chanel 115 messages. 34 unread window. Okay. Messages. So I'd like to go to the beginning of the window. Unread. Or what's David called Goldfield. the top. Ah, with command. Uh, VO command home. Close button. And you always have your typical close. Minimize button. Minimize. Full screen button. And full screen buttons. If Actions we VO right. Inbox. Chanel. We are given the title of the window. 126 messages, 45 unread. With the number of unread. Toolbar. And then we have the toolbar. The toolbar is one thing I hide, but I'll just show you what's in, in here. Toolbar. 16 items, filter, menu button, get mail button, new message button, archive button, delete button, junk button, reply button, reply all, forward button, flag red button, all flag right. menu, menu And button. there's more, but you kind of get the idea. These we can all, we can find in the menu or use keyboard I shortcuts. Toolbar. So I'll show you um, what it's like when I hide the toolbar in a minute. So favorites bar group. then you have the favorites bar, which is very similar to the favorites or bookmarks bar in Safari, except for mailboxes. And so you can add mailboxes that you might visit frequently. Mailboxes is the same means the same thing as folders. Um, and so I might use the terms interchangeably, but if we're talking about your inbox, a mailbox, or your sent mailbox, um, sometimes you use folder. Well, on the Mac, it is a mailbox. And I'll still understand what is meant if you say folder. But anyway, that's the Mac terminology. So. We can, um, if we interact in the favorites bar, in favorites bar group, six items, toggle mailbox list button. We can use that to toggle our mailbox list, which will be, um, we can also do with a keyboard command. All inboxes, 82, toggle button. Okay. We'll get to the in all inboxes and different things. For some reason in Big Sur, I took away like the all inboxes, all sent, drafts, whatever, from the favorites, but because it, for some reason, taking it away from the favorites bar also removed it from the mailbox list. So my favorites bar is not as customizable as I had it. But if I wanted to move to all mailboxes, for instance, I could press command one. Um, all drafts, all sent, all trash, three that Mac training spring 2021. So my max training, training is the fifth item on here. So I could do command five to go to the Mac training mailbox or to move something to the mailbox, I can press command control and a number. All I right, so favorites. that's the favorites. And then vertical splitter collapsed on left. We have the message messages list. table. Now 
Then to the right Unread. of the message list. Horizontal splitter collapsed on bottom. Okay. I have, yours might be a vertical splitter. Right now, mine is a horizontal splitter. I don't understand why it changes, but mine is collapsed. And the reason why, when it's expanded, the message displays on the right. And that might be convenient for some people, but when that happens and you are arrowing through the message list, messages are automatically marked as red when the splitter is expanded. Um, so I don't have an expanded right now, and I generally don't like that. Of course, the disadvantage for some people is the inability to use VOJ, because VOJ would only take you from the message list to the mailbox list. But there's a very simple way of reading messages, which I find to a little bit less quirky, more reliable navigation. So I'm going to show you I hide the toolbar. We're going to find these things in the view menu. But for now, I'll just give you the keyboard shortcuts. Command Option T. Hide toolbar. And then I might hide the favorites. You can still use the favorites without the favorites bar showing. Command Option Shift H. Hide favorites bar. And then I show the mailboxes list with Command Shift M. Show mailbox list. Oh, by the way, that splitter, if you want to collapse it, you need to take it to 100%. So you would interact and then. Um, well, I'll just show horizontal you Horizontal splitter collapsed on bottom. So if we interact. In horizontal splitter. VO up arrow takes it down. 72, 66, 57%. But VO down arrow. 6, 60, 70, 100, 100%. Takes it to 100%, Out which of is horizontal collapsed. Splitter. If we VO left. Messages, table, column, horizontal splitter collapsed on bottom. All right, so there you go. That's how to expand and collapse that splitter. Let's go to the top of window again with VO command uh, home. Close button. And VO right. Minimize the full screen, but mailboxes, table. Chanel, 46 on. And then we're directly in the mailboxes table. Selected. So we lose the window title and the status. You can, if you have Keyboard Commander active um, or enabled with VO Shift K, you can use Option U to um, hear the unread message count. 83 unread messages. But this other thing earlier said 46. So it's, I think 83 is in the number, the total number of mail accounts that are unread, the inboxes for those accounts. Okay, but let's actually go through the message list. Full so mailboxes table. we're at Chanel. the mailboxes table and that'll be Selected. on the left, just kind of like you have your sidebar on the left. Um, and then the messages table Vertical split messages table column one. is on the right. To go to Unread. the top of the messages table, we use command option up arrow. Three message com and to go to the bottom, command Collapsed. option down column arrow. One, wrote three message so in, normally I tell you, I've mentioned how in text edit, or not text edit, um, the finder or other areas where there's tables or rather lists, you can move to the top with option up arrow and to the bottom with option down arrow. But for whatever reason, in mail, you have to add command. So command option up and command option down. And to move from message to message, we just use our arrow keys. Three message, three message conversation. So let's Collapsed. See. Unread. Herbie and Bradford. How to read.php files. 1934. Okay. Interesting. We'll talk about threads in a minute. If we down arrow. Three message conversation. Collapsed. Unread. Bradford and Fazel. Reading strategy to read this. All right, let's Two keep message going. Conversa um, column one. Want to find one that's unread. not human wire. Join human wire March 9th, 13th at the 2020. All right, so let's say we wanted to read this message. 19, Actually, I'm going 19. to find a message that we can read because I want to show you. Um, so if I know of a message that's already here, and really awesome thing is. I can type the first couple letters, whether it's the subject or who it's from, it doesn't matter. So I have a webinar um, or a newsletter thingy from APH. So if I type A P column one, row seventeen, unread. F. And if I press enter to begin reading, it will do at that. webinars register or today. Open it. Chanel all mail window toolbar. View this email in your browser. Access Academy is the education professor. Okay, and we get the idea. So if we, so what it does is it kind of reads some of the status information. Career Connect. Um, the subject, and then the mailbox, and then it starts reading it. We can use the same text edit commands. Um, we can interact. Um, we don't need to, unless you really want to, you know, get to some details. But again, command up arrow. 
to go to the top and all those wonderful commands we just talked about earlier. I bring up this email because there are some links here. You may frequently get an email with some links. Maybe, you know, you get an email with a link you want to click on or maybe a Zoom invite link or something. Um, so let's down arrow. Link. View this email in your new line. Heading level one. Access Academy logo on blue background image. Access Academy okay. is the education professional's one-stop resource for the training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Webinars you need to get the most of Access Academy link. Rehabilitation and education professionals. New line. March 10th, 2021. 1. 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Event detected. And so this thing says event detected. So you could have all kinds of fun with that, trying to add that to your calendar. More playful experiences. But that's not this um, webinar. More, more play so a lot of these are for, you know, TVIs, teachers of the, you know, kids who are blind, um, low vision. What do crazy ducks at this webinar and warning? So link. register here. We could click VO. So when you want to go to a link, you just need to press VO space. If there are several links on one line or if the thing says to... To go to this website, click here, you would probably then move over um, by word or via right arrow until you get to the link and then via space. But it's right here at the beginning of the line, so we can do via space. Safari web in a registration. Zoom. And then it opens the registration, which we don't really want to fill out. So I'm going to close Safari. So Command Q. Empty dimmed scroll area. Mail. All right. F webinar. And then, um, so let's say Morning. we didn't link. click on the link. We're well, regardless, we're taken back to the email. So when we're done, all we need to do is Command W close. to close In the email. Um, let's say if we want to call, call four message, convert three message, column one, fifth, column one, row 20, um, column two, row 20. Puzzle of the day. All right, if we wanted to read this puzzle of the day, we could Your press daily enter. puzzle report, Chanel, all mail, window, Let it read. toolbar. You came in 78, 4476. All right, that's points. nice. I'm done looking, so Command W. Close. Inbox. So enter to open and read a message, Command day. W to close it. All right, so what are some of the actions we can take on messages? Um, well, first of all, let's just delete this message because I've already read it. To just delete a message, you can press the delete key. I believe that command delete permanently deletes a message. And if you press command shift delete, that deletes all messages from all of your trash mailboxes. So if you have several accounts, you'll have several trash folders and it would delete all those. Okay, so we can just press delete. Three message conversation. Collapsed. And let's go. Four message um, three fifteen message conversation. Let's find, let's column see. Column one, row 49, the APH email column two, again. But again, it doesn't matter. So there's various ways to take actions on a message. First is our great handy context menu, VO shift M. Menu. And down arrow. Open. So we did that. That was just pressing enter. Don't need to go to the menu for that. Send again. Reply. Reply all. Forward. Forward as attachment. Redirect. Mark as unread. Move to junk. Mute. Delete. Flag. Int archive. Flag. Interactive. If you really want to flag something, you could interact with that little thing in the menu. And um, normally you wouldn't think you'd have to interact. But when it's something says interactive, well, you would interact. But I've never found a need for these flags. Archive. Move to submenu. Copy to submenu. Open. Send again. And we wrapped back around. Okay. But that doesn't give you the keyboard shortcut for how to, what to do. Message. So we're going to go to our menu bar. Menu bar. Apple. And across the top, we have the usual Apple. Mail. Mail. File. File. Edit. View. Mailbox. Message. All right. So we're going to go into the message menu. And since we're looking at messages, it makes sense. Here are the things we can do with messages. And they'll show their keyboard shortcuts. Message. Menu. Send again command shift D. Reply command R. Reply all command shift R. Forward command shift F. Forward as attachment. Redirect command shift E. Mark as unread command shift U. Move to jump command shift J. Mute control shift M. Flag submenu. Set priority submenu. Archive command control A. Move to predicted mailbox dimmed command control M. Move to submenu. Copy to submenu. Move to Mac training spring 2021 again. Apply rules, dimmed command option, L. Uh, we'll talk more about this next week when we do mail preferences, but I do not use rules because I create them on the Gmail website. I have sender to contacts. All right, one thing that we have different here that was not in the context menu is add sender to contacts. Remove attachments, dimmed. 
Send again, Command Shift D. And we're back at the beginning. All right. Messages um, table. So now let's say I want to forward Follow this. Follow my help. Appointment scheduled at you. Okay. U oh, how did it jump there? Column one. All column right. one. Row forty nine. Column two. Row three. Message come. All right. So I just went back to the top with Collapsed. command option up Unless. arrow. Column one. Row seventeen. Column two. Row seventeen. F. F All right. So we could. Um, we could 10, forward 40, then this email, and you 5. can either be focused on the message or inside of a message to forward it. So we could do Command Shift F, and I am actually going to forward this one to Herbie, so you kind of get the idea of the sounds for sending a message. And apparently, my sounds were not coming through earlier, but um. This is the message we'll actually send. Later on, we'll go through composing, and I'm going to put in a bunch of names, so we probably won't send that one. But for now, we can just forward with Command Shift F. Forward, forward, F webinars, register today, window, to edit text. And I'll start typing H E R by Allen, Herbie, dot Allen, at Gmail. And there we go. We can press Enter to put in, we could press down arrow to look at more options. Um, for that person, but I'm just going to press Selection enter. Replaced. Embedded. Herbie All right. Allen, and then I don't really need to add anything to this message. So I'm just going to press command shift D to deliver a message. That's the best way. Yes, it is for send, but since the command S and command option S and all those S things are taken, we can think of sending as delivering so you want to deliver a message. The other menu way you bar, can Apple. find it is, of Mail. course, Fire go into the message. New. Mailbox message. Mess. Send command shift D. And you can find send that way. So we'll just press enter since we're here. Send. Okay. Sometimes you have to press it twice. I don't know why I didn't do that. Send again. F webinars. Register today. Window. View this email in your browser. All right, now I didn't hear my sound, Sir, so go accept. figure. <laughs> All righty, well, that's forwarding a message. So now we can do command. Oh, wait a minute. At link, new line. Oh, so what happened is it opened the message, so we need to close it. Com we didn't open it, but for some reason it did. So command W. Close. Inbox. Chanel 126 messages. 45 unread. Window. Messages. Table. Column 1. Row 17. Forwarded. F. F webinars. Register today. 10, 45. All right, and it did say forwarded. So now let's take a look at viewing some messages in a thread. If we command option up arrow Three to message go to the conversation of our collapsed. inbox. Unread. Herbie and Bradford. How to read that PH3 message see. conversation. Collapsed. Unread. Bradford and Fazel. Reading strategy to read this. Nine. Okay, so if we want to expand a thread, notice it says collapsed. And I have something in the view menu to do with conversations. I forget the exact option checked. And so that way the messages are grouped together that are related or part of a thread. To expand the thread, we can press right arrow. Row two expanded. And then down arrow. And I believe since I have things sorted with the first, with the latest message on top, I believe that also applies to the thread. Column one, row three, unread. Bradford Snyder. Re reading strategy to read this. Okay. 19, 24. And now I'd like to introduce something called use column layout. It is in the view menu and right now it is checked. When it is unchecked, I'll show you what happens. So we're going to go to the view Apple. menu and V. View. view and menu. I know what I'm looking for. So US. Check mark. Use column layout. Press enter to uncheck it and get out of the menu. Use column layout. All right. Now if I... Uh, let's see. Oh, so what happens when we do that, it kind of takes us out of focus. So we need to get, find the message list again. Vertical split messages table. All right. And down arrow. Three message conversation. Collapsed. Unread. Herbie and Bradford. How to three message conversation. Expanded. Unread. There we Bradford go. Bradford and Fazel. Reading strategy to read this. 19. 24. Assuming you are using Safari on your Mac, try the following. 1. Open Safari and access the website to use CMD plus Shift plus R to enable reader mode. 3. Press VO plus CMD plus H to navigate to the first heading, which is usually the title of the article. All right. So kind of a little bit of a review for us. So we can essentially hear, I like to use this, especially in threads, because sometimes I'm on all these email lists and like 90% of the threads I don't want to read. So this is kind of a, you know, getting a sneak peek 
um, the regular, for whatever reason, this is the only way I have found to actually show um, like the preview accessibly. You could still have that um, thing expanded, the vertical or horizontal splitter, and you could have the use column layout unchecked, or I mean checked, but then you might not hear the message content even if that splitter is expanded. So this is a way, you can also specify somewhere whether preview should be two or three lines or whatever, and there's no way to control that, at least for us accessibly, but um, you'll kind of get, I don't know, the first several lines of the message. Okay, so let's say we want to move this Road message to into Mac training. Why not? Um, I can refer to it later. The simplest way is command, control, and the number five. Mac training, spring 2021. Two message conversation. And there we go. Collapsed. Unread. Monica Svoka, getting All right, and that's um, another, let's see. 20. So let's Hi, find Chanel. a How message to move. With? I love to pick on these Wednesday. ACB community emails. So I'm going to type AC. Three message conversation, collapsed. Ava, Keith and uh, No, let's ben see. Haya, unread. A ah, Campbell. actually, here we go. Cindy Hollis. All right, so I type, sometimes it doesn't always go by the subject. So this time I typed, you know, the message, um, who I knew it was from, so CI, and there we go. All right, so I showed you how to move something into favorites with using the command control and the number. But we also encountered the move to and copy to in our menu bar and context menu. So I want to show you those because, or the move to, because it'll kind of be a preview of the mailbox list. So if we do VO shift M, menu. and then we do up arrow, because the move was kind of at the bottom of the menu. I know that's weird logic, but that's how it goes. Copy to sub menu. That's why I always don't like using VO and the arrow keys because if I use the arrow keys themselves, I have a bit more flexibility as to which direction I can go. Move to sub menu. All right, right arrow. Move to sub menu. All inboxes sub menu. Okay, so here we go. We have all inboxes. If we expand, we basically. There'll be several review questions that talk about navigating and kind of the basic answer will be arrow keys. You know, how do you expand things? Right arrow. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of gives you a help up with those, some of the questions. So um, we can expand these, this all inboxes. All inboxes, submenu, Chanel control shift D. All right, that, so I tried to create keyboard commands for folders and that only works so well. Um, you can go into system preferences, keyboard and shortcuts and add things. That's a whole different lesson in this itself. And there are great guides online for how to do that. Herbie Chanel. All right, that's my, another account, my Herbie Chanel account. Herbie. 986 Demix, UHD, Comcast. Some of these I have that are Herbie's and my shared. 98.6 Demix Management. Own. But anyway, lots of accounts. So these are all the inboxes for those accounts. I don't really want to move it to another inbox. I could, but let's left arrow. Move to submenu, all inboxes, submenu. And down all arrow. drafts, submenu. All right, and so we have all drafts. If we expand that again, we'll see the same Chanel, Herbie, Herbie Chanel, all of those. All sent submenu. Same with sent. All trash submenu. Trash. All junk submenu. Junk. All archive submenu. And archive. Chanel dimmed. All right. Chanel is dimmed because that is indicating we're now right below this dimmed thing. We're going to find all the folders that are part uh, or mailboxes that are part of the Chanel account. So what we just saw earlier, the inbox, the drafts, the sent, the trash, the junk, and the archive are what are called unified mailboxes. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you, but when I go to all inboxes, then I will see messages from all of my inboxes, including those from Chanel, Herbie Chanel. So if you have several accounts, it's a great way to view all your messages at once. Um, and since sometimes I get, we Herbie and I get duplicates, you know, I like to look at, I'm using more of, you know, looking at one account and then another, but the all, inboxes can be really useful. Okay, so we're here, um, just a refresher. All archive, we were at our archive, and then if we down arrow again. Chanel, dimmed. The Chanel is dimmed, because now we're gonna see uh, mailboxes related to Chanel. Archive. 
So we have, we have the archive. It was already in all archive, but here we have the specific Chanel archive one. Drafts. Drafts. Sent. Sent. Trash. Trash. Junk. Junk. Gmail. Trash. That's some other folder extraneous. I don't know how it got there. ACB community. And here we go. ACB community. So we can press return. Unread. Planet money. Results from the city that just gave away cash. Zero. And that message is moved. Okay. A new um, study looks at the... We could do, you know, command option. I mean, command shift U to mark this as red. Mark as red. Or again, we could or go into a message. Let's say we saw this Road thread. Road expanded. And John Gasman, 0733. Um, someone else who let's uses say I just wanted to go in here. Someone look else who at uses it. MVDA will have to help you. Jaws has a great OCR package built right into the program. Okay. And I could reply with Command R or Command Shift R to reply to all. So you don't have to be. The moral of the story is if you want to do things like reply and forward, you can either be in the message or just pointed to it in the mailbox or in the message list. Close. But now it's time to look John at Gassman. the different mailboxes. So we're going to VO left arrow twice. Vertical splitter. Mailboxes table. And it's the same thing. You go to the top, command option up arrow. All inbox. The bottom, command option down arrow. Send. And there we go. All so inboxes. Um, we can do all inboxes, which is, well, if we expand it, it is already expanded. Chanel, 40 but let's just say I want to go to see all the messages in my all of my inboxes. So Chanel, we're all on inboxes. all inboxes. If we do VOL, well, all VO, inboxes. VOW, there it'll say what we're on. And then if we VO write twice, Vertical messages table. And if I go to the top, command option Unread. arrow. Tune in. Your coronavirus briefing. Catch up on the latest news. 1955. Stay current with the most. And inbox Chanel. Okay, that's from Eight Chanel. message conversation collapsed. Unread. Chris, Amanda, Don, Crystal. Three message conversation. All right, I think a collapsed. lot of these Unread. are Herbie and from Bradford. How my to read. inbox um, specifically. But 19. all the right, great. Let's say I want to check on the messages all in inboxes. Herbie Chanel. Chanel. So I could go unread. where we were. We still have all the all inbox. inboxes expanded. Chanel. Herbie Chanel. Um, and then we down arrow to get to Herbie Chanel via right. Verticals messages table. And command Edge Park arrow. underscore services at edgepark.com. Your order has been shipped. Oh, Number that could zero be deleted. Five, I got, well, actually, maybe not. 14, we might want to um, just double check on that. Paramount Plus. CBS All Access is now Paramount. Okay. Amazon.com. So we get Your the Amazon. idea. Amazon.com order number one. Amazon.com. Your Amazon. Audible.com. Um, later, we'll talk about filtering now and stuff, too. Now Okay. Edge Park. All right, so that's vertical um, mailboxes. If we keep going, Herbie so Chanel. we will down arrow. Herbie, one unread, nine hundred eighty-six Demix UHD Comcast ninety-eight point all drafts one unread. Okay, so now we've moved to all drafts. We could expand it with the right arrow, point. or we could um, just keep going. But let's say I want to expand. I'm sorry, collapse all inboxes. So I am here on a folder so I can do left arrow and that will just take me to all inboxes. All inboxes. And then if I press left arrow again, Row two collapsed. it collapses it. So depending on where you are, you may have to press left arrow twice to collapse something. Um, all drafts, one unread. If we open all drafts, right arrow. Row three expanded. Oh, I changed my mind. I don't, I'm not really, well, Chanel, where is that? One unread. Oh, okay. So we could do via right twice. Vertical messages table. Chanel Marie Allen, F webinars. Okay. I don't know why that was a draft, but there we go. F um, webinar, delete. Table. Okay. So Vertical we mailbox kind of get the idea, table. you know, you can Chanel. choose a mailbox. Select. I can also, oh, one thing. So let's collapse. All drafts. So we press left arrow once and that is back on the folder. Row left arrow collapsed. again collapses. All set. All trash. Mac training spring 2000. Inbox. Mac training spring. All right. The reason Mac training thing is there is it's part of favorites. Now, if you interact with this mailboxes area. In mailboxes table. And then you go to the top again with command option up arrow. All inboxes. 80 unread. Collapsed. All right. So, and then you do VO up arrow. Favorites. Expanded five items enclosed um, level one. We see one. favorites. And like I said, this favorites now shows up in the mailbox list, which really I don't like. They can stay in the favorites bar, but whatever. 
when you're using VO and All up and down favorites. arrow, expanded five items in closed you level one. Expand and collapse pressing the backslash key. So if I do VO backslash, row one collapsed. If I do it again, row one expanded. And there we go. But then if you keep pressing, so normally I never interact um, in the messages or the mailbox list. If the one reason you might want to interact in the messages list, if let's say you have the use column layout checked and you want to move, you want to move down by subject, you can find the subject in one message, interact via right until you get over to the subject field and then via down arrow through your list and you just read only the subjects. Um, but and then here, though, we might want to interact in the mailboxes table to kind of get more details about the structure. So interacting will reveal a little bit more about the structure of something. Favorites. Expanded five items in closed all inboxes. Except menu bars. You really don't interact there Collapse unless level something two. says interact. Favorite. All but, inboxes. 80 okay. unread. Collapsed level two. All drafts. Collapsed. All sent. One unread. Collapsed. All trash. Three. Th Mac training spring 2000 on my Mac. Collapsed level one. All right. And so there's something on my Mac. If we expand it. Row seven expanded. Recovered messages, Chanel. Level okay, two. I don't know Chanel. what's there, but um, the there we go. In closed level one. So then what happens is we see Chanel. Now we did not see that when we were just using down arrow. Um, we immediately came, or I would normally come to just the folders related to Chanel or under that. But because I'm using VO down arrow, I could actually collapse Chanel. Row nine collapsed. And then Herbie Chanel. Expanded um, 25 we items in closed directly level to one. Herbie Chanel. Uh, so if I didn't feel like, you know, arrowing all the way through, Chanel, you know, that could be good. Row nine expand. Um, as always, we can use first letter navigations. So I could do AC RKCB community. and via right twice, although I think I need to Out of mailboxes, table. There we go. Via right Vertical twice. messages, table. Cindy Hollis. Or you could do VOJ. But remember, when you do VOJ, um, voiceover automatically interacts. So then... If you want to look at something outside of an area, you have to uninteract. In mailboxes table, ACB. So VOJ went to the mailboxes table. Selected. If you do VOJ ACB again, in messages table. Cindy you Hollis, are in the messages. Post availability form. Okay, so I'm going to just Good go question. back. If VOJ. You are in mailboxes table. Back ACB up to the top. All inboxes, and unread. I'm going collapsed. to. Oh, that's collapsed. I'm going to expand it. Row two expanded. Um. You can expand, if you're not pressing VO in the arrow keys, if you're just pressing the arrow keys, you can expand with left and right arrow. If you're holding down VO and doing up and down and you find something to expand and collapse, you do the VO backslash. So I'm just going to type CH Chanel, for Chanel. 42 unread. And then Level VO three. right. Herbie Chanel. Oh, Chanel, that's 42 right. Inter I'm interacted because of the VOJ thing. I know that because I did VO right and got to Herbie Chanel which I didn't want. So um, I'm going to uninteract and table. then via right Vertical twice. Messages, table. Planet money. Okay. So let's see what else we have Zero in view. Six. And then we're going to move on to a new study looks at um, the sending a message. Let's see. Oh, Key wow. It's already eight. Okay. Well, let's 16. try to, I'll try to hurry this menu up. Bar, okay. Apple, view. View. Menu. Show tab bar. I don't know what the show tab bar show is. Show all tabs. Customize touch bar ellipse sort by submenu. All right, you can choose how your messages are sorted. Sort by submenu attachments. Check mark date. Mine is date. From size subject to unread oldest message on top. Check mark newest message on top. Attachments. And we wrap back to the beginning, so that I don't lose my place in the menu. I'm going to do VO left Use menu sort by submenu. And now we're on sort by instead of the show tabs. So now if we down arrow filter submenu. All right, I will show you filter in a little bit. I don't use it, but if you um, are maybe one of those people who don't move your messages or you've had, you know, I sometimes hold on to messages too. They've been in my inbox forever and I'm looking for unread or looking for from a certain person. That's where you can use the filter. Filter, submenu, enable message filter command, L, include, dimmed. Yeah, we'll go into the include in a menu, minute, but. Filter, submenu, okay. use column layout. Use column layout. Um, so that is unchecked right now. And again, you could just press enter to recheck it. Show slide preview. To. All right. That, like I said, it'll show um, a vertical splitter instead of a horizontal splitter. Again, it really doesn't make much of a difference if the thing is collapsed. Show date and time. Here are things that can be shown um, in the message when you're viewing the messages. And I've honestly haven't found a difference when voiceover reads messages 
which you're airing through, so I just leave this stuff alone. Show to CC label. Show message size. Show contact photo. Highlight conversations. Check mark. Organize by conversation. All right. So I have organized by conversation checked. If it was unchecked, the threads would not be um, together. So you'd find a message. Maybe there was one about um, Safari, but then there was also one about um, OCR. But they were part of two separate conversations, but they were just grouped. When you have it unchecked, they're grouped by the time they came in and not by the thread. Highlight call, check mark, organize by conversation. Expand all conversations. So by default, you could have those uh, messages always expanded. Collapse all conversations. Collapsed. CC address field. And now we move to things that can be shown in the message when you're actually composing. So CC, if I pressed enter, CC address field. When we go compose a message, the CC thing will be there. Menu bar. I'm going to do V View. to get back View. and then CC. Check mark. CC so we address get to our field. spot. If I down arrow, BCC address field command that can option also, B. Oh, check BCC address field command option B. So that can also be in the message when you're composing, um, shown or hidden. Reply to address field command option R. Same with the reply to message submenu. Message doesn't really. You can highlight and do some things with headers. Um, never found anything important in that submenu. Hide related messages. Dimmed. Hide mailbox list. Command Shift M. And here are those things that I. Um, enabled and disabled in the beginning. The mailbox list, so command shift M. Show toolbar command option T. The toolbar. Customize toolbar ellipsis. Oh, yep. Show and favorites then... bar command shift option H. Enter full screen command control F. Show tab bar. And then we're back at the top. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to show you messages was searching. Planet but I'm wondering from if maybe. This might be a Zero good six. place to stop. And next time, a new study we will cover how to search selected. for messages, how to send mail, including attachments, how to view attachments. Um, I'll go through adding a mail account and then some other preferences in mail that you might want to adjust. Zoom us. So Zoom. does anyone have all any new participants questions? Checked. You are sharing me. computer. Anyone have any questions? Um, this is Janelle. This is Rosanna. All right, Rosanna and then Nancy. Um, I do have a quick question on the mail. I've been using the um, VOJ mm -hmm. to, to jump from, you know, from the, the mail into the mail and then VOJ to come back out into uh -huh. the mail list. Does it make a difference whether you do it that way or the other way? Is one better than the other? Um, well, like I said, when so I suppose as you arrow through the messages, then you're you're not hearing things like whether it's unread. Correct. Correct. I'm not, that's right. I'm I'm just arrowing down, and it's actually if you arrow down, it will read part of the and it's right. Really weird. It will read it even if you don't do VOJ to get inside of it. Right. That may be because you have the use column layout unchecked and what, ha or I forget there's always all these, you know, configurations, but what happened is your vertical or horizontal splitter is expanded and that's why you can do VOJ. Oh, but the disadvantage okay. of that is the messages are marked as red. Um, so if you like to still know which messages are unread, as I do, you may not want that. But if you're fine with how things are with VOJ, mm -hmm. um, I found though in the past if I do VOJ and I want to interact inside the message and kind of move by word or find links, the navigation or actually, okay, that part might be fine. But then if I want to VOJ back to the mailbox list, it doesn't always do that if I have to interact inside of a message. So I don't like using the VOJ method. I mean, VOJ is wonderful. I would use it if it didn't mark the messages as um, I didn't read. Realize, I didn't realize that it did that. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that because now I'll do it the other way because that way. You You'll might. have to collapse that splitter. Um, like I mentioned, it's to the right of the messages. Um, so okay. it's in between the splitters in between the messages table and the actual message. So if I VO right to the splitter, 
Do I have to interact with the splitter in order to collapse it? Yep, interact and then take it to one, a uh, VO down to take it to 100%. Yep. Gotcha. Thank yep. you. All right, great. Nancy. Okay, so um, on the organize um, feature, um, I <clears throat> really love it in on the phone and I get really confused with it on the Mac. And sometimes when I try to use the right arrow to expand, Mm -hmm. I'll get to the bottom of a message and it won't go to the next one. So what am I doing wrong? With okay. So then do you, you do right to expand and then you have to use up and down arrows to, to move to whatever message you want to in the thread. And then you would press okay. enter to read the message when you're done, command W, you know, use the air. It should still be expanded. So then you can use you know, down arrow to move to the next message or up arrow, depending on how you have your messages sorted. So what you're saying is it, when I use the down arrow to read line by line through the message, when I get to the next one, I have to hit enter to make that next one open up. No. Oh, you're okay. I'm in the message. And so it, you would it, close it, the message. So you'd press enter to open the message and then you'd close it with command W and you'd be taken back to whatever mailbox you're in. And then you'd down arrow to move to the next one in the thread. So, you know, first, when you get to a thread, you expand it with the right arrow and you'll see the me a message there. You'll have to down arrow. Once you expand it, then you down arrow to the first message. If you want to read it, you press enter. When you're done reading it, you press command W. And then you can, you know, down arrow to the next message in the thread. Enter command W oh, to close. Oh. Yep. So we, so they don't all open together in one like they do on the uh, phone? Um, there's kind of a way to do that, but it's a little bit goofy. So <laughs> I don't recommend reading it that way. Okay. So they're, they're together. But you open them separately. That's right. what I didn't understand right. on the Mac. Okay, thank you. Yep. That was, thanks for clarifying that because I had a similar question, Nancy. Yeah. yeah, all right. This is Dorothy. Yes, Dorothy. Um. So I have, I originally started my mail through Safari on my desktop. And then I have decided I liked it the way it go does under mail on my MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. But but have you ever opened or used the mail in Safari? Well, it depends. Like, um, so the Gmail, like, depends on your provider. I have used, like, the Gmail website to view mail, if that's kind of what yeah. you're thinking of. Um, yeah, that's what I, that was the original way that I started on the desktop but it's very difficult. Now I'm going to try the commands you gave to um, read it. It's, you know, the commands you showed today in right. mail works great, but I don't know how to, get, I do a lot of searching okay, for we'll, emails. Yeah. So I got to figure that out. We'll cover that next mail. time. That'll be one of the first things we cover next week. Okay. And um, you'll have to, you know, if you, we'll also go over how to add an account um, into your the mail on the Mac, um, if you have to do that as well. Okay. I hope yeah. not. I have too many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. This is Nancy, and I want to know how you only have 100 emails in your thing. I have, like, I don't even want to say how many. It's ridiculous how many emails I have. Well, I have, you know, I've created a bunch of filters on Gmail or what are called, which are, like, rules. I do try to move messages right away. Some I don't deal with. For it, My rule of thumb is if I haven't dealt with a message in a week, chances are I'm not going to read it, so I delete it. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> or so two weeks, said, maybe. Command, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Command, command uh, shift, command, uh, command, delete, sends it to trash, or does it skip trash? I think it skips, but I've tried to, I thought I heard that from somebody, and I've tried to find an answer, and I've not 
definitively found one. So that might be one for your Apple people. Um, but if you press delete, it will go to the trash. I know that. Okay. It's Dorothy right. again. Yeah, Dorothy. So um, I have been having problems with when I go to uh, do a reply. Well, not mm -hmm. a reply, maybe a forward. And um, and then it, I'm at the two. And it says text, you know, type text in here, but it will not type the text in there. So I don't know whether... Um, I hit enter or am I doing, you know, VL space? Yep, How you'll hit enter it? and we'll go over that next week. It, you'll, when you find the name you want, you'll press enter. Uh -huh. Okay, I didn't find the name. I was just at two and it won't let me type. Okay. Um, well, you have to, you know, use your keyboard. I don't know how to direct you with the mouse. Um, no, I'm so. using the, I'm using voiceover and I get right. there and, and and then when I try one day VO space worked, but then it didn't work again. So I'm not able to type. It says I just type, start typing, but then when I do, it just takes my cursor somewhere else in the email. Uh, hmm. It shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. All right, you'll have to make sure your navigation is not your quick nav isn't on for one. Um, and if it sounds to me like, I mean, are, is the text you're typing actually getting put into another field or is it not even uh, going in there? It doesn't end up going in there. The cursor actually jumps somewhere else, but you are correct. I realized that my quick nap was on before class start and I thought maybe that's why it's doing it. Right. Because the other day it was working fine. And then again, like we talked about in, you know, lesson two, uh, make sure in voiceover, you know, you have your, key, the cursor, you know, it's the keyboard focused item and sync voiceover cursor with keyboard focus. That's in the navigation category of the voiceover utility. Um, it's important okay. to have those checked. So. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, 9th, if there are 17. no more questions, I think we will call it a day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you. Yep. Chanel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Right. Yes. Thank you. See you. Don't forget next. to turn your clocks ahead this weekend. Oh, it's this weekend. Yay. All right. We'll do. <laughs> That's great. Can't wait. Daylight savings time. Yay.